Welcome to the Refined Savage. Today we are going to be talking about the South African stone put technique for Highland Games. So as athletes, I think we tend to mimic the people that are at the top of the heap in our sport. So when I was in the sport, your best throwers uh, in the stone put, for the most part, were South African stone putters. We had one guy, Peter Goodmanson, who was a bronze medalist in the European Championships and an Olympian. Uh, he was able to do a full spin with just about any stone he got a hold of. Uh, but the South African was a lot simpler technique. You got a lot of the same benefits out of it as the full rotational throw, but it was a little bit better in adverse weather conditions, adverse field conditions. It just held up better. It was a little simpler to learn, and you got a lot out of it without the uh, huge technical problems that come about at, with the full rotational shot put or stone put. Now that I've come back into the sport, what I've noticed is a lot of people go into the full rotation, and that's great. If you've got that kind of background and can handle a full rotational throw, more power to you. I think we tend to mimic some of the best guys in the world without having that athletic ability that some of the guys had. So Matt Vincent is a, a, was the top of the heap for a long time in this sport, two-time world champion. He was a full rotational thrower. Matt was probably the most athletic guy I ever competed against. So to try to mimic everything he does is probably not the best idea for most of us. So let's look at a simpler technique to get you into a good position in the middle with a little bit of momentum, and that's the South African stone play. So let's take this from the beginning. We're gonna start with the setup. So your setup is the same with the stone on your neck, on your chin, elbow up nice and high. You're gonna have your left arm extended in front of you. Now some people will drop it a little bit lower, some people a little bit higher, some people like a thumb down or a thumb up. That's all gonna be your personal preference. When I set up in the back, I think about having my foot straddling the sideline, one foot in, one foot out. You have a seven and a half foot run up, which is six inches further than a normal shot put run up. But you can also cheat the system a little bit. So you've got your four foot trig in the front, so you've got a little bit extra room if you think about pushing towards that left side of the trick. So when I set up, my right foot is out of the sector, my left foot is in, and I'm pointing my left foot towards that left corner of the trick. And that's where I'm gonna to sprint towards. So I'm not looking at forward at all, but off to my left, and I'm driving my left arm towards that. So my setup is gonna be set up so I can drive across the trig and get a little bit more room out of the box when I throw. No matter how you set up, it's a personal preference. To get to the middle, we're gonna to have to create some movement with the body and some momentum. So unlike the full rotation where we can kind of sling around the left and get way outside the left and throw that right leg in, we've gotta figure out how to create momentum out of nowhere. So I personally like to spend a lot of time with my feet in contact with the ground. It's always been an easy way for me to think of it that when my feet are on the ground, I'm pushing on the ball. When they're not on the ground, I'm not pushing on the ball. So I want to think about getting across the ring, spending as little time in the air as possible, and keeping those feet on the ground and rotating. So when I start this out, I start with my left hand high, chest up, eyes up. That's huge. You'll see a lot of people try to come out of the back with their head down and they look at their foot and they dive into the middle. You want to think about nice and smoothly across the ring with your chest up and your head up seeing the horizon. That'll keep that ball in the right trajectory so that when you hit the middle you can raise up into the ball. So as you come out of the back, one foot out, one foot in, I like to think about turning the left knee open and slinging my right hip through to the middle. Not so much my foot, but my hip. So I'm thinking about driving that hip to the middle. Once I get there, I'm turning the right foot hard. I see a lot of people who don't quite understand the concept of the rotation. So their feet, when they hit the middle, go dead or they'll drop their heel. You have to stay in the ball of your foot and it's the most important part of the throw is to keep that right foot turning and grinding against the ground. That's why you see a lot of guys wearing a rotational shot put shoe on their right foot. Now, like I said, with weather conditions, and, and your level of technique, that's something you're gonna have to play with. But the most important part here is chest up, arm up at the horizon, 
drive the hip across the middle and then keep that right foot turning as soon as it touches. Okay, so we've gotten to the middle. Now, when looking at our feet and we're hitting a good power position, we want to think about our feet left toe in line with our right instep. Again, talking about a right-handed thrower here, you lefties should be used to changing this stuff around in your head anyways. So, left foot, left toe in line with the right instep. That way we can drive our hips through into the throw. And we're thinking about having the ball back behind the right hip. So when you land in the middle, the ball should be behind the right hip with your left hand extended as far as you can, nice and loose, okay? Once that happens, you have to be patient. You're waiting for that left foot to land. As soon as you feel the toes of that left foot land, you're turning that right foot as hard as you can and lifting with that hip into the throw. At the top, the chest is up, the elbow comes around, and the ball comes through. Reverse and finish, okay? Your power position in the middle of the South African technique, like we talked about in the, in the prior video, is gonna be different than your Braemar stone put. So if you're a Highland Games thrower, you're gonna to have to practice both techniques. A good solid Braemar stone put, similar to the glide shot put, and your power position throws for the South African and rotational, which is gonna be a little bit higher chest position, arm stretched more out than down, and you're gonna think about a huge extension with the hips, okay? You're not gonna have as much leg drive because your leg isn't gonna be bent as far because we're trying to mimic the actual position you're gonna get in. It is not necessary when you start this throw to be in a deep squat position. It's a hip lift, it's a hip explosion. You don't have to think about being in a deep squat. Freedom of movement is more important, so let's think about whatever position in the, in the back of the ring is gonna get you to the middle quickest and with, with explosion, okay? You don't have to be super low, be in a nice athletic position. Hit that middle, turn the foot, drive the hip, and release the stone. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Uh, let's talk about what's coming up. So this weekend, Saturday, is the Ohio-Indiana Border War APF powerlifting meet. We're gonna have a booth set up there. Make sure you come out and say hi. We're gonna be putting out a new t-shirt just for that event. Uh, I think you guys are really gonna dig that one. Uh, we're gonna put the image up here so you can check it out. Uh, that will be up on the site on Monday as well, after the competition, if there's any left. So if you're at the competition, stop on out, say hi. I'm gonna be hanging out there with Craig Smith, former professional Highland Games athlete, uh, and we're gonna try to do some podcasting with him. Uh, podcast coming up following uh, on the next podcast, what next Wednesday is going to be my main man, Zach Pape. We're gonna be talking conjugate training. Uh, so you might wanna check that out. Anyone have questions on conjugate, this is gonna answer all those questions for you. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.